Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. Um, hi, Ian, who's the first one on the chat? Hello. <laughs> um, welcome to our first webinar, DuckSoup webinar of the new year, how to use web, soup, uh, web hooks in DuckSoup. Um, I hope you all had a great holiday period, wherever you were around the world. Uh, we certainly had a, a good time here at Ducks and looking forward to the new year ahead. We're going to be talking about webhooks today. Uh, before we start, I'll quickly introduce our presenters. So we have Will van der Sanden, the founder of Duck Soup, who many of you are familiar with. Will will be kicking things off for us. And then we have a new face, Giles Garnett, who's our new head of professional services at Duck Soup. Uh, welcome, Giles. Um, he'll be doing the bulk of the webinar and we'll be talking to you about how to use webhooks in duck soup. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Will and then he'll hand on to Giles and we will get going. So Will, over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jill. And yeah, uh, welcome everyone. Also again, uh, or still a happy new year as well. Uh, welcome to the first webinar with our new uh, fresh uh, uh, head of professional services who's going to be uh, showing uh, you all about the, uh, the web books. Uh, just before we do that though, uh, just to give you a bit of context. Um, so the, the webinar follows up uh, um, sort of after the uh, previous one about setting up a, uh, a dashboard and in Zapier or using Zapier. And while setting up a dashboard, people will find that you need to trigger different webhooks at different uh, points in time. And this uh, webinar is all is going to show you how you trigger a specific webhook uh, with DuckSoup, uh, so you can then configure Zapier correctly. So that's the sort of context. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, Giles Carnett, uh, Head of Professional Services, he's uh, sitting next to me, and he's going to uh, introduce himself now. Hello everyone, my name is Giles. Uh, Happy New Year to you all. Um, and yeah, as, uh, as Will has just said, we're going to go through uh, how to trigger various, uh, various webhooks in various instances um, and, and how to trigger those uh, through various events and, uh, and actions within, uh, within DuckSoup. So without further ado, um, we will uh, take you straight in. Um, we will uh, we'll have time for a question and answer session at the end. Uh, Jill will be here collecting your, your questions via the chat box, so put your questions there um, and we'll, we'll cover those later. Um, and be aware that uh, what we're going to be covering today um, is uh, a, a turbo feature. Um, we will be looking at the webhooks here, we'll be working in Zapier, and uh, so that you're, you're familiar with, uh, with those uh, those particular areas. So, um, first of all, maybe uh, starting off uh, the basics, uh, what is a webhook? So, a webhook is basically a way for, for an app to provide other applications with real time information. So, a webhook delivers data uh, to other applications as the actions happen so that you get the data fed immediately to where you want it. So, in this case, we're going to be using Zapier, um, carrying out the integration with, uh, with DuckSoup using the webhooks. And then, then you could transfer your data into uh, any other chosen application, be that Google Sheets or your, your CRM, uh, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So first of all, we're going to start with um, a visit event. So what we're going to do here is we will be looking to um, a visit event occurs uh, when, uh, when you manually or automatically view a profile in LinkedIn. And an automated visit will result in two uh, events. We'll come to those in a second. So one will be for the initial profile view, and then after the ro robot has opened the connect tab, uh, the contact tab, that will include then the email address if it's part of your first degree connection, and that will provide an update event. So um, in order to uh, trigger these actions, uh, in, in order to do that, we need to, uh, first of all, uh, create a zap. So we'll go into, uh, into Zapier and we're going to go to make a zap. 
and we will go to the webhooks uh, feature here. And what we need to do here is we need to catch hook. Let's continue. And then this here is our webhook, uh, our custom webhook URL. So we'll copy that. And then here in, uh, in Duck Soup, in the options, I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. <laughs> Excuse me one second. No, you actually have to click them on bottom. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we are going to um, paste uh, that URL in here. And this is purely for a visit event. So we will turn on this webhook. You see, DuckSoup saves the options. We now have the uh, the um, the webhook here in configured in DuckSoup, and what we need to do now is in LinkedIn uh, visit a profile or two. Uh, we will uh, visit a first degree connection. So we'll go to uh, uh, current connections, and we will just visit uh, one profile here. In LinkedIn. One thing I uh, forgot to mention as I, as I was doing this, I'll just let this do its, uh, do its thing a second. One thing I forgot to mention was here under actions, we should always make sure we have run automated actions when manually browsing, browsing profiles. Therefore, we will actually get some data now this time when we do this again. Um, so we go back to here and um, can just reload this profile. And this time you will see the, uh, the pop-up come where we'll actually uh, gather the uh, contact information as well. So there we are, it has the profile and now we have the, uh, the contact information. So if we now go, now go back to, uh, to Zapier, and we uh, press continue, and do test and review, we should now have some data. We've actually got three lots here, because um, probably because we were already on the, uh, on the page. So the first one here, the uh, hook B, you can see here the type is a visit, and the event is create. So we have the, uh, the create, uh, the create, the, the, the data here. And then the second one we have here under hook A, we click on that one. This is the update uh, data. And you can see within this, uh, this payload here, if we scroll down here, we will find we have the email address because this is a first degree connection. First of all, we, we've created the, the, uh, the contact here. And then we have updated the detail here uh, with the contact details. Okay, um, so that is the primary. That's that's the first uh, example there of being able to create some data, gather some data out of um, of LinkedIn using a webhook here. You would then um, click done ed done editing, and then your next step would be to then. Uh, map that data that you have captured into your chosen um, end application, be that your CRM or your Google Sheets or whatever. So that, that way we can, uh, can gather information from, um, from just carrying out a visit onto a, onto a uh, profile. Okay. What we'll do now is we will go back and we will create a new Zap. Um, doing uh, the action, uh, the action uh, activity. Excuse me one second. So an action event occurs when an automated action in LinkedIn is completed. Um, and the action name can be one of several as defined in, uh, in the documentation that we have uh, on the website. So an action could be sending a connection, uh, disconnecting, endorsing, there's various things in the uh, you look in the support uh, website, uh, you will see them all listed there in the, uh, the webhook by example documentation. So um, 
Yes. Yeah, so what we will need to do to uh, to test this and create some data within uh, within Zapier is uh, we will create a new Zap. Uh, we always advise um, creating a new Zap for each of these activities. It makes troubleshooting and traceability of any problems you face a lot easier. Um, so we will now create a new Zap, which will be an action Zap. Once again, we'll make another new Zap. We have, once again, um, we still have the, uh, the option checked here to make sure that automated actions run while we're manually browsing. And what we now need to do is send a um, connection request to a second or third degree uh, connection. Um, so we'll turn this on. Uh, we will include a personalized message as well. Apologies, um, writing and uh, typing and talking is not my strong point. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, maybe we just don't send a personalized message for now, uh, just for the uh, capturing. It doesn't. Uh, okay. For capturing the actual uh, action event, um, it doesn't matter if you add, include a message or not. So. Okay. So you don't have to. Uh, yeah. For now, we don't have to worry about typing while talking. Okay. <laughs> All right, so once again, um, we go into to Zapier and we will use the, the webhooks once again. Uh, we once again choose the, uh, the catch hook option, press continue, and we will copy and paste the, uh, the webhook for the action into there. Okay. Now we need to carry out a search within LinkedIn uh, to look for a um, new connection. Um, so we will go into here and we will look for a second degree connection to um, send a connection request to. So we will. Uh, we have we have uh, made our zap. We sorry. We have started to make our zap. We have customized the hook. We now want to gather some data by sending a connection request to somebody. This is the uh, the web hook that will be used, and we will now go and send a. Uh, uh, we'll carry out a visit to someone's uh, uh, profile. We actually click on the profile because then the, the information will be gathered. Wait for, uh, this would normally be an automated action being carried out by the robot. Let's wait for it to uh, carry out that. And now, it's sending the connection request automatically. It's a little slower than normal today, <laughs> but uh, that is all automatically happened. So that would normally be, that's an automated visit, sending our automated uh, connection request. As you can see here, the auto tag defaults invited has been applied to that profile. Let's go back and turn that one off. And we'll go back into Zapier. We now should have some data here, which gives us, you can see here the event, the, 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 uh, it's an action, uh, an action type of event, and the, uh, the event is, um, sorry, the data of it is its connect profile um, activity there. And once again, you can see here all the data that you get there. Key thing here, which, uh, 
which can be used as a, a, as a, as a unique identifier is it has the data profile ID here used very uh, very often in order to be able to uh, match that with your database, be that your CRM or within your Google Sheet. Okay, so we've now covered uh, visit events and um, action events. Yeah, and just, uh, just to add to that, so, so for all the different action events, uh, to trigger them uh, for the purpose of development is always in the same way. So you would enable the action uh, in the action tab, uh, and then just manually visit the profile, and that will then result in the event being triggered. So uh, yeah, so in the same way you do a connect, you can do all the other actions. So we're not going to demonstrate that, because uh, that would just take uh, too much of, of your valuable time. Okay, so now we can go back. What we will now look at is uh, message events. And uh, first thing we'll look at here is a connection request being accepted. And in order to uh, trigger that, we need to go into our current, um, in order to get some test data for that, we need to go into um, uh, my network and change uh, some of the uh, tags within there. What we'll do first is we will create a news app. Normally, if you're doing this, then yeah, it's advisable to name your apps as you go because uh, otherwise you get a, a little bit uh, lost and you end up with lots of uh, name your apps apps. So once again, we are creating a uh, webhook uh, again here, and once again. It's, again, it's the catch hook uh, option there. We press continue. Uh, we need to copy and paste this into a new There we go. Uh, so we're creating a new um, a new webhook here which will be catching uh, the, the types of messages that we're looking for here. And um, because the connection accept, um, because the connection accept uh, activity, it, it comes through the message, uh, through, through the message uh, bridge, uh, that's the way we need to do it. So first, so we have, uh, let's just double check. We have, we've done the webhook. We've customized that. We have put the webhook into the options. We have made sure it's a message type. And now what we need to do is look at, um, in this case, we're going to look at the most recent um, new connection. And what we'll see here, wait a moment. We need to remove the default accepted tag. So we'll take that one out. Um, go back into um, yeah, <laughs> waiting for the action to fire. <laughs> um, we need to turn on the message bridge. Now, the first time we turn on the message bridge, the message bridge will check the standard LinkedIn mailbox. The second time we turn it on, it'll check the sales navigator mailbox. And then the third time, it will check for new connections. So we'll turn it on once. And we should see the um, standard LinkedIn mail, mailbox open. We'll turn it on again. You will check the uh, Sales Navigator mailbox. And then the third time, it will now check for new connections. So there we go. You can see here it's uh, checked for new connections. It's found a new connection and it's re added that default accepted tag. Um, and then it's going through checking for other new connections, which you will not find because these have all been previously tagged. Okay. 
So now we can turn off the message bridge again. And we will go back to, uh, we have an error, but I think we're okay there. We'll continue here, and then we will test and review. And once again here, we have some data. And here you can see that we have a message type, message has been received, and this is our new, uh, our new connection. As you can see here, it's got these data tags. The important thing here is the data type, it's the invitation accept. So that way we can um, ensure that whenever we receive this data type, this invitation accept, then um, DuckSoup knows that this is a new invitation. We can then take it through the webhook and uh, have that placed within uh, your CRM, and have the data forwarded to your CRM, maybe want to then trigger a remote action to carry out the visit to gather the email address or something like that, um, which is often uh, what's required for a CRM uh, to be able to create a new contact. So that's the first of the, the messaging um, uh, webhooks that we wanted to show. And then finally, um, We'll show a, a, a further um, message uh, webhook here, where we will look at uh, new messages that are coming into uh, into uh, LinkedIn. And we have a couple of uh, errors there. Okay, so once again, we will um, we'll make a new zap here. Again, we will be looking uh, to create uh, using webhooks. And once again, a catch hook. It's a little repetitive, I know, but uh, the more you do it, the better, the, the, more, the more comfortable you get with doing it. So we'll once again copy this. We will paste this into uh, so we have our fourth one. And what we now want to do is we're looking to um, our mailbox. Um, so what we need to do in order to be able to gather some information here, because we want um, we want to have some unread messages for uh, for the system to pick up. So we're going to mark uh, two messages here within the mailbox as unread. And once again. We will go back here. We will press continue. We have our web. Uh, we have our webhook there. We have put the webhook into the uh, into the options of Turbo. We'll press continue. And now we need to go back and enable the message bridge in order to uh, stimulate. We you can see here you can have this running and it would check every ten minutes or you can define that yourself. Uh, in order to stimulate it, now we will turn it on. It will open the, uh, the window there, and it will find uh, some unread messages there within the standard um, LinkedIn mailbox. Okay. May take a, a, a few moments just to uh, to pick up all the messages here. There we go. So it's found uh, the unread message there from the top, and it's then doing the same with the uh, the next one down as well. There we go. As you can see, it's also applied the. Oh, sorry. Oh, it uh, closes automatically because that was uh, finished out. If we needed to check the um, Sales Navigator mailbox, we then uh, enable the message bridge again there. In this instance, we don't need to. So uh, what we now need to do is we will look here for um, our sample data, which has come through. And once again here, we have uh, in the payload here, it's a message type. It's been received, 
and uh, we have a URL to uh, the location of the message, uh, the timestamp, and then this is the key thing here, it's a member to member message uh, and the text from the message as well. Once again, we have the uh, unique uh, ID number relating to the profile within LinkedIn. Once again, down here, let's look at the second uh, set of data that we have. Um, and this was the the sent message that we uh, that we uh, that we that was there beforehand. The, uh, the one that triggered the response. Yeah, great. Just to, to add to that, so this is uh, uh, some slight, uh, I guess, weirdness from LinkedIn. In, is that when your connection request has been accepted, uh, only then will the message that you sent be uh, added to your inbox or to your message box. So here we're actually looking at the uh, send message and the message body, as you can sh uh, see, is, a con is the connection request message. Um, but yeah, well, as uh, Giles said, so, so when DuckSoup detects new unread messages in a conversation, it will uh, capture the last interactions of the conversation and forward all those to the uh, web. Okay. Okay, well, excellent. Thank you, Giles. I think uh, that was all we wanted to, uh, to cover, which I think is already quite a lot. So just recapping, um, when, when building uh, ZAPs, you are always forced to capture sample data so you can then uh, map uh, the data from the incoming uh, webhook to particular actions in Zapier. And to do that, you will, you will need to trigger specific events with DuckSoup. And the most common events are the ones that we showed you. The uh, visiting of a profile, uh, which is the most straightforward one, clearly. The, uh, the triggering of an action, like the connection profile, or the connect profile action that we uh, demonstrated, or I say we as Giles, obviously. And the uh, the message events uh, that are where well, the most two most popular ones are clearly the uh, notifications of um, uh, connection acceptance and the uh, member to member messages. So allowing you to pull all those conversations out of LinkedIn into your uh, CRM. Okay, well I think with that we are ready for uh, some uh, Q and A, uh, Jill. Me, okay. Yes, definitely. Good, good, good. Okay, so I'm going to go right back to the top. Um, well, we've answered, kind of answered some of these on the chat, but I'm going to ask them or put them to you and Giles, um, Will. So the first one from Matt, do we have any direct integrations with any CRMs so we don't need Zapier? Um, I've answered that partially, but uh, do feel, feel free to, to answer that. No, there currently aren't any direct uh, integrations with uh, any CRMs. Um, I've uh, been on a number of uh, booster calls recently, and uh, yeah, there are many different flavors of CRMs that are being used by, by our customers, uh, by the users of DuckSoup. Um, yeah, as, as long as though you can integrate those into, uh, into Zapier, then, uh, then the possibilities are, are there to make sure that the data flow is correct. It's just a case of making sure that these webhooks are correctly configured to ensure that the, the various data fields match up from, uh, from the, uh, the source uh, to the destination. I uh, just, just wanted to add, add to that, actually. Uh, we have, so we are looking to add native integrations to CRM. We have two existing native integrations, uh, one with uh, with Simplify and one with uh, Lead Views. And so in a similar vein, we'll be looking to integrate yeah, the most popular CRM systems uh, from our customers. So uh, it, it is definitely uh, going to happen this year. So I can tell you. Right. And that's kind of what I, I said just to add to that, Matt. Um, so the two I was talking about was Simplify and yeah. Lead Views. Um, but we are always looking for more, so feel free to ping on the chat. I've got a couple of others actually I've had through um, for potential integration, so feel free to put them on there and we can um, approach them. All right. 
So the next question, it's from Gemma, a bit of a troubleshooting one. And I said to Gemma, if we need to go to support, then that's fine. But just wondering if we could answer that on, on this forum. So it, uh, Gemma writes, no data comes through when we run the test and review in Zapier. Any comments or anything you can add to that? Or is this one for support? Um, I think that possibly that's uh, somebody who I had a booster call with uh, earlier today. Um, hi, Gemma. Um, uh, yeah, we, we went through the, uh, the webhooks in the last sort of 10 minutes of the call with her this morning, um, only touched on it very, very, very briefly. So hopefully what we've gone through here will be able to uh, point you in the right direction, Gemma. Um, and yeah, as, uh, as, uh, as Jill says, then maybe the, the best route is uh, via a very quick support call where we can just uh, make sure that that is happening in the correct way. Okay, thank you. Um, this is one from Kyla. Again, I've partially answered it, but I'm interested to get your thoughts on it. What is the appeal of sending the connection request that way, I presume through, through the webhooks, as opposed to running DuckSoup normally? Is it just it's connected to Zapier and then you can automatically send the data somewhere? So, um, well, for one, just, we send the connection request in this manual way only for the purpose of generating uh, data uh, to then uh, be able to configure Zapier. So it's really about generating uh, yeah, sample data for Zapier to configure. Uh, uh, normally, you wouldn't send send a connection request uh, in this uh, in this way. You would use the auto visit, or you would use uh, uh, the API for remote control. But um, it's really just for the purpose of uh, generating test data. Okay, great, and that's kind of what we we said. It's for for using the data yeah. um, in another way. Okay. Um, so Mario, how can I filter the event if I have the different events, for instance, visit, scan, action, etc., in one webhook? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. So it says, how how can I filter the event if I have the different events and the examples of the different events of visit, scan, action, etc., in one webhook? Okay, well, uh, you, uh, to do that, you need, if you want to be able to handle multiple events in, in a single, uh, in a single zap, which I think is what uh, the question is, uh, is asking, yeah. uh, you will need to use the, uh, uh, the Zapier path element, which basically allows you to create different uh, execution paths in a single zap, uh, depending on certain attributes of the incoming data. Okay, thank uh, you. I think it does what's yeah, so it's it's actually uh, disabled here as you can see. Uh it's um this is in the, okay. Um uh, it's because of the configuration, but it's also it's only available in the more expensive uh Zapier subscription. Okay, thanks, Will. All right, so Jack asked, does this connect with FLG, which is a CRM sales automation system? So I'm going to take that away and do our normal approach to see if we can connect. At the moment, they don't, Jack. Um, and then Jack had another question, which was, um, can we just re-clarify the CRM systems that we do connect to? So I'll just say, so one is Zimplify, which is spelt with a Z like simplify but simplify z y simplify <laughs> um if you just go if you google it i'll put it on the chat and then the other one is um is lead fuse i'll put them both on the chat jack <laughs> yeah, just just to add to that uh most most crm systems do include some uh extension capability uh so, and uh, they will also include the ability of um in effect well uh, uh, creating your own uh, listeners for these uh, webhooks. From the, the from the perspective of, of DuckSoup, uh, it could send the data anywhere. So if you have a developer who is able to customize your CRM, uh, you should also be able to uh, to build these native integrations. Uh, yeah, by, by by tweaking the CRM itself. So. Great. Thank you. Um, Tom
Tom comment that we could integrate with Salesforce at some point, that would be great. We think so too, Tom. <laughs> so, so far they haven't, um, they haven't come back to us, but absolutely agree with you there. Um, then we had another question about, um, can we, I think this is asking about, can we talk a bit about the webhook remote control that, um, did we touch on that during during the webinar, the webhook remote control? The, uh, no, we didn't actually. Uh, okay. So, if you, uh, yeah, so there is a, a remote control event here as well. And really the only uh, purpose of this uh, event is to listen for remote control activity. And if you check the support article about this, uh, you'll see what sort of events are generated. Uh, it's this one here. So basically, it has a it has a, an event for for all different kinds of remote control activities. So when the remote control receives a new a, a new command, or when it completes a command, you can see what has completed. Uh, and also when the robot is, or when the command is not executing because the snooze is happening, you can also receive those uh, events. So it basically allows you to tr to track what the remote control is doing. And if I'm correct from memory, the next webinar is actually going to cover how to use this event uh, to build a, uh, uh, a remote control dashboard like that. Um, but that could be one webinar off. Yeah, I think it's two away. You're right. Two away. Okay. Yeah, coming soon. Coming soon. Okay. Um, I think we're on our last question. Might not be one we know, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Oh, no, there's another one. Sorry. Um, the Zapier plan. Do we have any plan, the Zapier plan, that we recommend in order to run this efficiently without running out of tasks? Do we have any recommendation? Um, uh, the Zapier well, plan to, um, to I guess, to, to choose without running out of tasks. It says, for example, 100 connection requests a day. Well, it depends on the sort of events that you end up uh, sending to Zapier. It also depends on uh, the number of steps that you configure. Uh, but if you're, yeah, if you basically do run out of steps, you're just looking I think the best thing to do is just to see how much you generate and then work your way from there. Uh, it's hard for us to to, to uh, yeah to really uh, uh, predict with all these variables what uh, the best plan is for someone. Okay, thank you. All right, Thomas, what's the main reason or benefits of creating five separate webhooks? Why don't you make one webhook? and filter, trigger, split, aggregate data with Zapier? So the reason for that is that, uh, well, it's twofold. So the, the most, at the most basic level, just having uh, single purpose Zaps makes it a lot easier for, especially for someone who's just trying to get his head around uh, Zapier, uh, how to uh, build and how to see what Zapier is doing, because each Zap will have a specific task. It was also very, uh, so when zaps don't work, if it's a complicated zap with uh, lots of conditional logic, uh, actually, well, finding your way through the, uh, 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 the, the trouble or, or your, doing your troubleshooting is really uh, well, very unpleasant. Um, but it's, yeah, it's also, if you actually look at the sort of conditional logic that you need to put it all in a single zap, you're looking at, uh, well, in, in my experience, you need at least the uh, the Zapier paths, and the Zapier paths are only available uh, in the uh, in not the first paid plan, but the second paid plan. If you look at, well, let's see, uh, it's so you it's custom logic paths uh, that is that is required for any of uh, for to do any of that, and then you're looking at the professional plan already. So those okay. are the three reasons. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Will. All right, and then just the last one. Just someone asking about how Lead Fuse 
fits into the picture. Um, so why why lead fuse? Uh, well, LeadFuse, uh, in effect, replaces LinkedIn as a source of prospects. So it is basically it's the thing that will fill the funnel uh, with new leads uh, coming from uh, different sources. And that's what LeadFuse uh, takes care of. Um, and then Duxoop will then take care of interacting with these people on LinkedIn uh, once they've been added to the LeadFuse uh, funnel. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to end it um, end it there. Um, the webinar recording will be made available um, to you straight after the event. You'll get an automatic uh, email. So I guess just um, remains for us to thank you very much for joining and hopefully see you on our next webinar in a couple of weeks. Thanks everyone. Thank you, thank you.